Topsy, though, because just before I went live, I saw this tweet from Rory Jennings. It made me laugh a little bit out loud. Then I looked at the squad and got where he was coming from. And Rory Jennings has said, and I'll show it on the screen, that what these bastards have done to our club is unforgivable. I think he's talking about Clear Lake and Todd Bowley. Our 1994 side that finished 14th in the league and lost the FA Cup final 4-0 to Man United is better than this squad. And it's Rory Jennings reacting to the squad going on the USA tour, st simply stating how poor it is. Even some of the new young signings they've made are not going. Some are, some are not. I mean, it is looking a little bit threadbare, boys, isn't it? Well, look at that. Look at the forwards. Look at the forwards there. I mean, I've, I've known Chelsea over the last two decades to have some serious forwards. Even before the Abramovich era, when they had players like Tor Andre Flo and Zola and Hasselbank Ooh. and Johnson. Look at the state of this. <laughs> this is embarrassing, isn't it? Like, I'm sorry, like, I, I kind of get where Rory's coming from here. Like, I, I have said for a long time that I do not understand the fans that are believing that this ownership are taking Chelsea to the very top. I find it very, very hard to believe. And I've said for a while they look, they look like they're finished. And I personally feel like there's a lot of Chelsea fans that I speak to that are really against this ownership and really don't understand where they're going with it. I will say that obviously it's not their full squad that's going for the title this season, right? We're going into the Premier League this season. So there is a transfer window that's open. But Chelsea, I've said it for a while now, I've got to be serious this window if they do want any kind of success this season, in my opinion. I don't they're know what they get. They're not serious. Go on. They're just not serious. Bro, we've said it. How many shows have we come on here and said the same thing? These guys have spent over a billion pounds, yeah, in what, two or three years? And they're not even in the top four, bro. Like, they are not serious. The people running Chelsea do not know what they're doing. And there's some Chelsea fans that are just going along with it. And I'm so confused as to why these Chelsea fans are going along with it. Because they have had an owner in Abramovich in the past that was ruthless, that brought them success. And listen, not everyone was a massive fan of the way that they operated the business and the firing and the hiring. But who cares? They probably was one of the most successful clubs this country's seen in the last sort of 20 years, yeah? And they've got this new guy in who don't know what he's doing, yeah? He's buying players that they don't need to buy. He's probably selling players that they you don't need to sell. Why he's getting rid of Shalaba, I have absolutely no idea. I think he's one of the actual pretty solid players that they've got. So I don't really I don't really get that. Uh, re really get that. I just think it's a wild, wild situation, bro. And every single transfer window, he just seems to make mad, mad moves. And... Why, why is he getting rid of Chalabar for? Is that still happening? Yeah, apparently Chalabar, they still want to get rid of Gallagher, don't they? Who I think, you know, I don't think he's an amazing player by any means, but certainly he was one of the better players, in my opinion, for Chelsea. Chalabar as well, both come from, um, you know, the Youth Academy as well. So I don't really get it. I, I don't understand it. I'm with ULB. I don't understand. I've tried to convince Chelsea, make Chelsea fans convince me like Don and some of the others, that this is going to work. But I just can't listen and understand it. I really don't. I have no idea what this Maresca is going to be, who some of the Chelsea fans now think is going to be as good as Pep all of a sudden because he learned off of him once. It is a real sort of copium, isn't it? It really is. And listen, I hope for their sake that Chelsea bang and we're all in the mud. But I do not look at their squad and think, cool, yeah, that's going for the title, isn't it? But you know no, what, Matt, bro, how can you say that? How can you say that there, Daniel? That you just said that, oh, I, I look at their squad and I can't see them going for a title when the, with the amount of money that they've spent. I know. At what but point? Only... Because you know what? You know what? Let me defend you and let me defend Arsenal, right? People, including myself, right? Ter Terry as well, people come on this, on this show, on this channel, and we all say to the, to the Arsenal fans, we say it to you, we say it to Igal, we say it to every Arsenal fan on here, at what point is enough enough? And at what point are you going to demand that success from your manager, i.e. Arteta, before you give him the chop? And, and the same question now needs to start going to Chelsea, but higher up. At what point do, do these Chelsea fans, and I know it's not all of them, start saying enough is enough? And I know some of them are already saying that, but not all, not, not everyone is. You spent over a billion quid. Yeah, you're struggling. You're not even. I think they struggle. They got Europa League or whatever. Maybe got Conference League. They're not even getting Champions League. Spent over a billion pound. And I ask you a serious question, yeah. And this would be interesting to hear from Terry as well because he's probably got the worst team out of three of us. How many of those Chelsea players, realistically... Now, nah, serious, bro, for real. How many of those Chelsea players, seriously, yeah, would you take at your team? 
I might take maybe what one or two. I don't even know off the top of my head. Dan, maybe the set, maybe maybe Terry a few more. They spent over a billion quid, and I'm not even sitting it. I want him, 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 him. If, if I'm being honest I'm with you, honest. are we talking the whole squad or just the traveling squad for this tour? No, nah, I mean whatever. Like whole, whatever. Whole, we'll do the whole squad. Caicedo, I, I would take at Man United with, with what we've got right now. I definitely would. And I'm looking at their squad now in front of me. Palmer. Carl Palmer, yes, yes, yes. I take Carl Palmer, of course. Forgot about him. That it? Levi Colwell, maybe. Really good prospect. Really good prospect. And, I, and I'm being honest. Again, and I'm not saying their players are poor, but I'm still looking at it from a perspective of how much are you improving? I look at the players we're linked to this summer, which we'll get on to later. And I think about... The, that we haven't even signed yet. I think about Ivan Tony, Zubamendi, Frimpong... Actually, Achehu would take, actually, Gusto. I think Gusto's a good player at right back. Yeah. Having said that, I wouldn't start Gusto over the low. But I'd take him in my squad, right? And that's not me saying Gusto's poor. So there's, there's three or four, maybe five at Man, from Man United. And we've got a squad that needs an overhaul. For you two, whose squads are at title contending level, there can't be many. That's I'd what I'm saying. Caicedo and Palmer, 100%. Other than that, I'm kind of struggling. I like Reese James, but he's made of glass. Gosto's not better than Ben White, but he is a good player. I wouldn't take any of their centre-halves. You could probably vouch at Arsenal for Kukurea, and maybe at City, because obviously he's doing well at the moment. He's a proper left-back. But I wouldn't say he's outstanding, like one of the best around. But he's OK. But yeah, I'm struggling, man. So that's the I'm point that I'm making, bro. How is that How is that a real thing? How have they spent over a billion pounds? Yeah, close to 1.5 billion. And the three of us here, collectively... Are looking at maybe four players max out of their team that we take right. off. That, that is absolutely wild. And this is why I said Chelsea under this owner, it's the biggest waste of money we've ever seen in football ever. Facts. It, it, it's crazy. I mean, when I'm looking at this squad as well, like I understand that you've still got Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Palmer. Uh, I assume Gallagher's on holiday because obviously he was at the Euros, but they want to kind of sell him, so I'm taking him out anyway. They've got four or five players that you would you got to come into this squad that are, that are not there. But it's when you start, and, and I often judge a team, and I think when you judge the best clubs, and Chelsea are in that category of best clubs, it isn't just the first 11. You have to judge what's there beneath the surface, what happens with a few injuries. That's where the concern is. And for all the Chelsea, I mean this genuinely, I, I haven't judged Chelsea yet this year. I'm not sort of sitting in the camp that's saying they can't be successful. I don't think they should just, just be written off. I don't believe they've lost their pool. But I do look at the thinness of this squad. It, I was only after Rory Jennings' tweet. I never thought about it. And I'm looking at it and thinking, if Palmer and was to get a bad injury this season, where's the goals and creativity coming from, genuinely? If Caicedo was to get a bad injury this season, who's going to anchor and secure that midfield? You've got, yes, you've got Lavia that might be able to do it. But I look at it and think it still feels pretty thre threadbare to me in that regard. And they need more signings. They need more of a core to come in, which I think is absolutely um, key to them. Actually, I think it's Tossin not even on this list yet. Well, Tossin has, oh, no, Tossin is on the list. Okay, so decent player in him. But I, I do look at Chelsea and I, I am looking at their fans and you've got this 50-50 split. Some that believe, like Don has gone on record as saying they're a top four team, get almost guarantee. If they don't even if they don't, if they don't get many injuries to major players, he thinks they can compete for the title <laughs> next season. Je oh. Right down to Rory Jennings, that's absolutely screwing. That this is the worst squad in thirty to forty years. So again, I don't think it's the worst squad in thirty to forty years. I don't think they're challenging for the title, even if everybody stays fit. Like I'm a bit more balanced on this, but two or three more experienced signings. And when I say experienced, I don't mean thirty year olds. I'm talking twenty three to twenty six years of age. Been there, done there, worn the T-shirt to add some real strength to this side because this squad traveling shows you that two or three injuries to this team and you could be in trouble next year, like really and truly. And people say, well, what about United? I, 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 listen, go, go, I'm aware of how weak my squad is with a few injuries. Look what happened to us last year. We've made two signings. We need three, four, maybe even five more this window and we're looking at them. So at the end of the day, like, I'm not sitting here and acting as if my team's perfect, but we are just talking Chelsea. Yeah, but you've also won two trophies in two years. So, you know, True. like, yes, you are a mess, and that was your worst Premier League finish in, in Premier League history, but you also won a trophy. Just but, to think, if I look at the... um, Just real quick, just real quick, Potts here. Listen to this, yeah. 
2021, right? Champions League final where Chelsea beat City 1 0. Yeah. This is some of these players that they had there. Yeah. They had Aspilicueta, Thiago Silva, Rudiger, Jorginho, Kante. On the bench, they had Olivia Giroud. They still had Kovacic there as well. Um, who else did they have there? That's pretty much it. Oh, Christian Sun is obviously left now and gone elsewhere. They, King Kai. They literally, King Kai, don't forget him. Apart. They've literally had a Champions League winning team. It's not the best team in the world, but they've literally tore it apart and made it worse. Like by spending a 1.5 billion, it's insane, man. And like mm. literally, this is the thing, right? You know what's hilarious about this as well? I always see people in the chat and that say, yeah, oh yeah, you guys love you guys love hating on Chelsea. You, you do it all the time. Bro, like for me, I I I I don't have no beef with Chelsea. Like, I'm just speaking the facts. If you're a Chelsea fan and you believe that this process is the right process, then good on you. Wish you luck. You know what I mean? Literally, I don't lose sleep over it. Yeah. All I'm saying is wake up and smell the coffee. In 2021, you won the Champions League. They've took that, they spent over a billion pounds, yeah, and you've not been in the Champions League since. So for me, I just think that you really guys should like you think we're the haters. Maybe you hate your own club in it because that's where you want to be, man. Do you know what's really interesting for me as well? Like I've I've defended Chelsea a lot of things this summer, and I stand by it. There's another player who's currently in the squad that I'd take in our squad. Actually, Tossin is there. I would. So he's another one. So I said four or five of their players I, I would take, but my squad isn't anywhere near where I want it to be. You're in a different situation. What I would say is exactly what I said a few weeks ago. The club has got to stop bigging up all these youngsters they sign, like Amari Kellerman. The way they reported that to the media and the journalists that were talking about it and the quality of the player and the money and the plan, for him to not be on this tour is almost embarrassing. It's you, you didn't need to big it up. We all know why you've signed this Kellerman guy. Mm. It's within the rules, it's within the regulations, but the fact that there were so many of the clubs facing PSR is all, tra all trading players. We kind of knew why he did what you did, but they still gave it this fanfare like, yeah, this, this is our guy. This is the guy that's going to transform Chelsea. Stop doing it. All of our clubs sign young players from other Premier League clubs, but there's very rarely a fanfare. Like Man United are linked to this guy at the minute that's, that's joining from Arsenal's academy. That's I think he's announced today. I hate the fact it's being reported on by the 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 the, the Yornsteins and the Fabrizios. Why are we putting all this pressure on this kid? I'm not saying it's coming from Man United because I don't think it necessarily is. It doesn't read like a Man United report. But why? It, it's not like this this young Ober Martins. It isn't like he's some young starlet that the whole world wants to sign. He's, he's a good footballer, probably. But there's certain times where you don't need to hype a youngster. And Chelsea kind of do that to themselves. Look, they need a few more good signings this summer. One player they are linked to today. Um, I'm going to put this up on the screen uh, for the haters that think I make these things up out of nowhere. Um, is Arsenal lead the race for Mikel Moreno despite Chelsea's interest? There are reports that are now starting to transpire that Chelsea want to hijack the move for Mikel Moreno to stop him from joining Arsenal and for Chelsea to sign him. Good quality player. Almost, you would argue, exactly what Chelsea needs, age and experience profile. But can you see, Potsy, Chelsea taking them away from you this time? Mate, I think we should just go and sign Rick Williams. Does anyone know who he is? No, I don't either. But Todd Bowley will want him if I say it loud enough. Because um, he has no idea how to scout players. He just goes on what Liverpool want, what Man City are after, what Man United are after and what Arsenal are over. Uh, it's crazy, isn't it? We link with Mikel Marino and they're like, oh, who's that? Yeah, go on. Any good? Yeah, go on then. We'll, we'll, we'll say we want him as well then, as soon as everyone else wants him. It's what it seems like with Chelsea sometimes. Very bizarre how they go about things. Um, they'll probably chuck a load of money at it, like they did with Mudrick, overpay by about £50 million, um, and, uh, and and potentially get him. But from what I hear... Mikel Marino is more interested in Barcelona and Arsenal if those two clubs are interested. So I think as long as those two clubs want him, they'll get him ahead of Chelsea. If the clubs don't want him, then Chelsea will get him if he wants to leave. He definitely wants to leave Sociedad. If he wants to go to England and fancies a, a, you know, a, a top six fight at Chelsea, then go for it. But I feel like he will probably want to go and try and win the league and the Liga with Barcelona or try and go for a title with Arsenal. So I expect that will probably be more likely. I think it's quite an easy deal for us to get done if we want to. He's around £20 million. Mikel Arteta is really interested in him from what the reports are suggesting. But one thing on Chelsea I wanted to mention quickly, I agree with you, Tell, that they do big up some of their youngsters. Oh, have you ever seen this kid play on YouTube? He looks unreal. This Paez is the next one, isn't he? The next Ecuadorian centre midfielder. It looks like he's going to be next level or whatever. He's about 15, I think. 
Um, and then you've got this Mark Gui. Everyone's talking about Barcelona. He come on once and scored a goal. He's going to be the next best thing. Like, just don't put pressure on him. As for Chido Obi Martin, I, I agree with you, Terry. I, I think he's going to be a highly rated player. And if Arsenal get, uh, if Man United get him, it probably would be a little bit of a sour taste left in my mouth because he's been absolutely killing it in the unders for us. But Chelsea, what LB was saying was spot on. And the reason I was going to come in right was when LB was saying, look, in the chat, people hate the fact we're trying to cook on Chelsea and we're trying to be the, you know, the haters of Chelsea. When someone's reply is, well, what a Man City signing? But what of Arsenal won? Look at the state of Man United. You know you've kind of got a good argument there because they can't fight back with their own opinion on why they think it's going to work. So they try to just slate your club. So, you know, like we got here, Dan, stop hating. I'm just speaking facts. I couldn't give a damn about Chelsea. I hope it continues. I hope what you're doing right now continues for the next 20 years, bro. At least. I hope it does. But if I was a Chelsea fan, I would not be happy. I'd be writing on that pitch. I'd be taking everybody that agrees with me with me, and I'll be trying to get that ownership out because it has been a shambles. It is a case study of how not to run a football club. Spending a billion pounds more and look at the mess that you've got. And people think Rory's going to be putting out that for likes, tweets, clicks. Rory doesn't need likes, tweets or clicks, right? <laughs> Rory does not need that. Rory gets enough. Rory gets enough of that. Rory's actually talking facts, in my opinion. I think everything he said there. Don't look at that squad and go, "Oh, Chelsea! Look how much they've improved." Wow, they just haven't. And if they want to go to that next level, go and buy Osimhen. Go and get in the Pedro Neto. Go and get in somebody in midfield that can take you. Even Mikel Moreno would be actually a quite a good signing at 28 with some experience. Who's just won the Euros. Go and take your team to the next level. Don't go and buy the next 19-year-old who's supposed to be Neymar in 15 years. Like, come on. Yeah.